Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Personas, and today I want to show you the show page inside of Studio One. Show page is pretty new, but if you're unfamiliar with Studio One, it is a full-on digital audio workstation for recording, composing, mixing, mastering, and sharing your music. But now, with the new show page that came out last year, it is a fantastic platform for performing your music as well as producing and creating it. Maybe you've had this experience. You've worked on, you know, you've slaved over a project in the studio. You've dialed in all these great tones and you think, man, it'd be great if I could reproduce this live, either on stage or especially with the technology we have now via live stream. But so far, maybe you've only done live streams from your phone and you think, I, I don't know exactly how I would set that up. Or maybe you've tried it. You've opened up whatever recording software you use and you've used a normal kind of mixing page and you've tried to like sort of pretend like it's a live mixer and, and it, it, it can kind of work, but you end up feeling, well, this isn't really how this was designed to go. We took that idea and turned it into a fully fledged, completely separate component of Studio One that allows you to perform and have it sound just like it does on the record because you're literally bringing in the settings and presets and everything that you used on the record. Just now you're using it in a live environment. So let me show you what the show page looks like and then we'll build up a short show together so I can show you all the things that it does. You know what, before we build a show from scratch, let me show you what the show page looks like and then we can start from scratch and build one. So the show page consists of a few different sections. Uh, this section in the middle should look pretty familiar to you. Uh, it looks a lot like what you would see if you were working on a track, right? You've got different tracks, you've got waveforms, but you've also got these kind of blobs here that have a bunch of different names. We'll talk about those in a second. Over here on the far left-hand side, this is our set list. So these are literally the names of songs or things that are happening as a part of the show. And we can quickly and easily rearrange the show, even you know minutes before the show begins. We can rearrange it, and as you can see, everything moves in the arranger as well. So the idea here is there's three things you can do with the show page. First of all, it's a live audio platform, meaning I can plug my microphone into it or my guitar into my amp modeling software, and I can perform live with all the plugins I want in a live environment. The second thing it is, it's a live MIDI performer. So I can plug in my MIDI keyboard, load up my favorite virtual instruments, and I can play along live, and the, there's no issues with latency. It works just like you'd expect it to. And the third thing you can do inside the show page is have backing tracks. Now that's the one I don't use as much, but you can absolutely take an existing song in Studio One, an existing mix, and you can do things like mute the vocal, mute the guitar, then you can export a mix down of that mix and drop it right into your show to have backing tracks for the show. So if you wanted to fully produce this thing using all of those components, you can and create a show that when you hit play at the beginning, it just flows all the way through. It plays the first song and it immediately transitions into the second song and the third song and so forth. Whether you use backing tracks or not, your songs will, your show will still look a lot like this minus this waveform here on this tracks channel. So what, what's the deal? How is this different from just having a regular, you know, mixer window in Studio One pulled up to set up all the sounds that you want for your show? The key difference here is wherever you are in the timeline. So we're here in the first song, now we're here in the second song, now we're here in the third song. If we open up the mixer and we transition from one song to the next, you might notice some things are changing, specifically the plugins on this guitar track. That's what's so cool about the show page. Uh, aside from the fact that you can bring in all your plugins and have all this great processing, you're not uh, you're not bound to only one sound. I did not mean for that to rhyme. Meaning I could have different guitar tones for different songs. I could have different microphone settings. One song needs a big ambient reverb. One song needs a slapback delay. One song needs nothing. Uh, and I can have all of that already baked into my show page, into my show. And then when I go from song one to song two, I can tell the system, I want you to switch from this preset to this preset. It can be as simple as just adding a little bit of delay, or it can be as wild as completely transforming the vocal into this crazy distorted thing and then back to something clean. You can do all of that on a song by song basis, which starts to get really creative. So you can have all those sounds you cooked up in the studio, you can incorporate those into your show. Now, we're good, this is beyond what we can show today, but on top of all that, you can use something like our Atom controller to 
even further control what's happening live on the show page. And when your show is all set up and ready to go, you can switch it to this perform mode and you can customize exactly what these little knobs and sliders and buttons do so that when you're actually performing, you're not seeing a mixer window and a bunch of plugins, which isn't terribly, uh, it makes you feel like you're like in a studio. Now I feel like I'm at a show and I've got this somewhere off to the side where I can see what's happening and I can do all the transitions and do everything I need to do from this nice clean interface. Okay, so that's the basics of the show. I'm gonna show you exactly how I feel like I've said the word show so many times. I'm gonna show you exactly how this works. Let me open up a brand new empty show and we'll start from there. For this example, let's say I wanna play a short three song show and maybe I wanna say a little something between songs one and two. That's the plan. Let's start by importing some tracks to play along to for the first show. So I'm gonna do that by going back into Studio One. The show page stays open in the background. I'm gonna go find my first song, which will be Fighter. Now I'm opening up the actual final mix session for this particular song. So we can hit play, we can hear there is music happening there. Now this is a show, so I don't think I want my vocal there, right? So let's mute the vocal. And I probably don't want the harmonies there because I'm going to be doing this as a live stream from my studio. Uh, and I want to play guitar along to it. So I'm going to mute out these all these guitars here. So I'm going to play electric guitar along to the song. So I don't want electric on the show and I don't want my vocals. Okay, we've muted the ones that we need. Now we can come up here to the menu and under song, we can go add to show and it's gonna pull up a list of open shows right now. This one's called The Greatest Show. <laughs> so let's add it there. Now, if you look, here's what it's doing. It is doing a mix down that we just created, specifically a mix down minus vocals, minus guitars, a custom mix to spit into this show and it's gonna show up as a backing track. As you can see, our show that was empty a second ago now has uh, a song in the set list called Fighter uh, and it has a player here which is what we call the different types of tracks there. We can call this one tracks, we can make it red, and now we have a mix down of that song without the guitar and the vocals. Okay, we're off to a good start. Now I wanna do this for, let's say, two more songs. So I'm gonna repeat the same process. I'm gonna go back to the start page, go find the other two songs and export them, minus vocals and electric guitar into this show. Okay, the show is starting to take place. As you can see, I've got each set of backing tracks here. Uh, they each have the tempo baked in. Uh, that was also information that was transferred over from the song page, which means any time-based effects like delay that I use will change tempos on a song by song basis. I didn't have to do anything to make that happen. Now let's say, like I said before, I wanna talk for a second between songs one and two. So we're gonna call this second song talk. So what's gonna happen is song one will stop at the end, uh, but listen, from listen to fearfully, will those that will just play right through one to the next. So I can tell it which, which songs I wanna stop, which songs I wanna just roll right into the next one. Uh, you can even set up multiple sets of tracks if you want a track that's in a uh, click, uh, just for the in-ears, things like that. You could have a separate, uh, one track for tracks, one track for in-ears, and the mixer is a lot like you would expect to see. Each track you could set its own different output um, so one's going to your headphones and one's going out to the live mix. That's no problem. All right, so let's let's actually add some uh, some instruments to this, and this will start to make a little more sense. First thing I want to do is I want to add some guitar. So we have three options of types of tracks. We can add a real instrument is what I want here. We'll call this guitar. Guitar should be I don't know, should be green today. Input will be that channel. Output will be that. And here we go. So here is kind of a blank track. It's kind of like an aux channel. By the way, I'm using our Quantum 2626 interface because it has super low latency uh, and I can play through plugins and it feels like I'm playing through an amp, which is nice. So you'll notice a couple of things. We set our input and output. Um, and right now it's just everything is blank. So each of these little blobs here can be set up with their own patches. That's what these drop downs are. So if I look over into my browser over here on the right hand side, I've got a bunch of different presets, both ones that come with Studio One, and I've created a bunch that I like. For this first song, I want just a standard guitar tone, so I'm gonna drag this preset I've created onto the channel. Um, and what you'll see is that it just loaded in a whole bunch of plugins 
on this guitar track, okay? So now if I grab my guitar, and I've got some guitar tone. What's cool is now I can save these different, I can have a bunch of different sounds and save them on a per song basis. So let's say I wanna, I like this one. I wouldn't mind if it had like an analog delay on it. Yeah, I like that sound. So I'm gonna save that as a uh, patch that will load up on this track. So I hit this plus and I call this uh, one for delay. Now this shows up as a choice for this track. So the quarter note delay is gonna be on this song. This second song, however, I wanna go back to, um, no, this is one where I just wanna talk. So for this one, I just wanna mute the guitar. I don't wanna to have to fiddle with touching buttons. I want the guitar to mute because I'm gonna say something. Then the third song is the one where I think I want kind of a, just a, a normal straight up guitar sound. So I'm gonna find that original preset that I had. Actually, we'll just turn the delay off. We'll turn the mute off and we'll save this as just crunch. Okay, so that's a kind of a preset just in this particular show. And now I can change this one to crunch. And then the last song, I want this big ambient sound. So I'm gonna dial in, let's see, I've got a preset called, here we go, ambient guitar. So I'm gonna drag that onto the channel. Uh, check the sound. With the head on the floor. Sorry. Um, so I like that tone. Let's save that as ambient. And now we can select that as our sound for the third channel. Now check out what happens. This is the cool part. I'm going to turn this on. I'm going to just click between songs. I'm literally just switching the position inside this timeline. And if you just look at the channel right now, you can see it's changing. The plugins are changing. The mute state is changing. We can even change the level if we want for each one, um, which means it's automatically changing all my plugins. And it can be as many or as few as you want. But listen, if I'm in the first song, second song, it's muted. Third song, got a little slapback delay and that's it. Fourth song, Sounds like a dying whale. So that is the cool, cool, cool part of the show page. By the way, the amp tone that I'm using here is actually two copies of our amp modeling plugin called Ampire. I have it set up in this killer chain that splits the signal left and right between two different amps and then a bunch of stereo effects. It is glorious, sounds so good, and of course it's included with Studio One. So that's, that's the gist of how the show page works. Obviously, as I mentioned at the beginning, you can play backing tracks, you can have it as an audio, uh, a live audio engine, but you can also use it for things like MIDI instruments. Let's add a keys track, and we'll color that some sort of, yeah, that looks like a keyboard color. Now we can do the same thing. If you have certain virtual instruments that you love that you wanna load in, or if you're a Personas Sphere member, you get access to all the virtual instruments in our library, which is quite extensive, and there's some beautiful sounds in there. You can load them up, and you might have guessed already, those can change on a song-by-song -song basis. So you can have piano on one. For example, this Personas Studio Grand, uh, the condenser one is beautiful. I'm gonna load that into the keys section for the first song, and then I can load in uh, maybe a string sound for that last song where it's really ambient. Let's go with classic orchestra strings. Let's go with like a cello section. We'll load that for the final song. Then the song in the middle, maybe that one needs some sort of a, like a like electric piano thing, like maybe um, 
I don't know, something like a Hall Rhodes, whatever that is. And you'll notice it's taking a second to load because it's actually loading in all the samples for these libraries. So these pianos, for example, uh, that come with Persona Sphere, by the way, they are, it's like a, it's at least a three to, I think it's a 300 to 500 megabyte piano, which is big, but the show page just loads it up for you when you open the show. And then if I'm on this first song and I want to play, I can. And if I move on to song three, the sound's gonna change for me. And our cello section. That's dramatic. And then finally, we can process a live microphone. Let's set up one more channel, and we'll call this Vox. It's the official color of vocals, which of course is yellow. The input will be, oh, it's a real instrument. Input's gonna be channel two. Output normal. And now we've got a vocal. Now the problem with the vocal right now is it's just unprocessed. So we have all this processing available to us. Why don't we take advantage of it? So what I'm gonna do is find a couple of presets that I created for my vocal, and we're gonna drag those in. So we'll start with vocal clean, and then we'll just save these each as, uh, that's Fox clean, and then I'm gonna drag in quarter note delay, and you'll hear this in just a second. We'll name that one, we'll just keep the name there. Vocal slap back, let's drag that on. Come on. <whistles> Groovy. And these are all plugins that are included with Persona Sphere, by the way. Uh, some great emulations of analog gear. And we'll create this one as well. So now I've created four patches. So if I come in for each song, the first song will be a quarter note. This one will be clean because I'm talking here. I don't want reverb or delay happening while I'm talking. This one will have a slap back and this one will have reverb. So now if I switch over to this microphone. So here's what the first song sounds like. Check. check, check. Yo. Yo, yo. And you'll notice that's in tempo with the song. One, two. One tempo with the song the delay synced with it now for song number two we switch over to song two and as soon as that gets here guess what no effects i just essentially have a preset with just the compression and the eq that i'm using so i got a little bit of compression on the vocal and a little bit of eq but then the effects are all gone now if we switch to this third song check it out same, same vocal same processing, process, but now we've got this crunchy, crunchy delay, delay plugin. I got a delay on my vocal. And it's different from this delay. This is a quarter note delay. And then finally for the last song, we've got some ambience. Check one, two. Ooh. So with this really chill song. A reverb and delay on my vocal. Don't you like it too? Yeah. So that is the overview of the show page. Thanks so much for sticking around. I hope if you're not already a Studio One user, you see how this alone makes Studio One super interesting and super unique. Uh, and it's also a fully fledged, wonderful digital audio workstation for all your recording, producing. Uh, arranging, mixing, and mastering needs. I switched over years ago, long before I worked for Personas, uh, and I loved it so much, I just I'm, just fell in love with it. And now I'm here telling you how great it is. So if you haven't checked it out, add it to your arsenal, see if it's a good fit for you. Uh, this show page alone, and this is just the first version. Imagine uh, once we get your feedback on what you like and how you're using it, uh, we're going to just continue to make it better. But I'm really excited about this, and I hope you are too. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Joe from Personas. Be sure to check out our website. You can find all the information you might want to know about Studio One specifically and all the other great products we make at personas.com. See ya.